So probably about six or seven months ago now, maybe a bit longer, uh, we lost out on about 150 grand's worth of projects. And ever since then, I've been documenting my journey to how we're getting our video production company back on track. And it feels like we can finally see a bit of the light at the end of the tunnel. So today I'm just gonna talk through some things that we're doing differently, some things that we're still facing and trying to overcome so that if anyone's experiencing a similar thing, hopefully this will help you on your journey too. If you haven't watched the previous videos, go through and watch them from the start. There's heaps of values, but in essence, a lot of our clients that were contracted didn't re-sign for one reason or another. And because we had been simply so busy, we hadn't been doing any sales. So we completely overlooked that. And within the space of about a month or two, we lost all of these clients and it left us with a huge shortfall that we were then frantically trying to get back on track uh, and to keep the business going. And I wonder how many of you have ever felt like I did just when, it feels like everything is against you. No matter how hard you work, things just aren't flowing like they should do. It just feels like, oh man, I used to really enjoy this. Or I used to be so clear on what my vision was and how certain I was that we were gonna be successful. And then all of a sudden, I was so blurred and I had no idea where we were going and whether or not whether you know, we could continue to tomorrow and so on and so forth. And that uncertainty, I've just come to realize now I'm in a better place, is just growth. When you're growing and you're trying to grow your business, it's gonna be like the most uncomfortable feeling you felt. And I saw this TikTok the other day actually, I found really interesting. It said, would you rather be happy or comfortable? And I think the answer is to be happy, but to be happy, I'm willing to sacrifice being uncomfortable and starting to keep pushing myself outside my comfort zone and constantly be in a state of uncomfort until things are back on track and we become happy again. Now, being comfortable and complacent is a big killer of businesses because you can be like very easily when you're starting out, oh, I made a sale today, I don't need to worry about doing any work or, oh, you know, I achieved this one task this morning, I won't worry about doing the rest of the tasks I've got on. And that's really easy to fall into that trap. And I've been there many times. And the people I speak to through my academy as well, all feel this same sort of thing from time to time in their businesses. And I think what I've realized is it's okay to dip in and out of that. You know, dipping into being uncomfortable for periods of time while you're in growth, and then to be comfortable, but for shorter periods and be aware of when you're being comfortable and laid back. And uh, we're in a good place now where I wouldn't say I feel comfortable, but I'm actively, you know, we're happier, things are moving better, we have a great team around us, there's lots of things that have changed over this journey. And we've got a few new clients, which has also helped with that process. Something I would advise anyone to do is when you feel like you're in a bad place or you're trying to grow or you need to kind of just take things back to basics, just think about what was working at the time where things were seemingly going well and you were having success. And that's what I did. And one of the big things for me was, I used to have a mentor, I used to invest in my own learning, whether that's online courses or whether that's personalized mentoring sessions or whether that's um, sitting in seminars and things like that. And just being around other business owners to ask questions to was something that in the past has really helped me. And although it was really important for me to get straight back on track with sales and start to get some money coming in, that's what I've recently done is reinvest in my own knowledge and having someone there as a mentor to actually go through some of these problems as we start to shift our business. And that's been fundamental in starting to reconnect with what is our business mission and what is the vision of my business now? Now, because it's changed since I did this years ago and I haven't had time. No, that's a lie. I've definitely had time, but it just hasn't been prioritized for me to go and do that. So now I'm working with a mentor to really build out this business plan that includes things like getting a more of a vision of our dream clients and updating our pricing so we start to charge more money and we can get those bigger ticket, bigger budget clients and be in those right rooms talking to the right people. And that's something where I could probably do myself, but it relies so much on accountability and it's guesswork. 
if you're just gonna kind of try and figure stuff out. So we were fortunate we're in a position to invest into a mentor and that's something that I'm really excited about. And it's already made masses of difference in the last couple of weeks uh, to the position of our business and where we're going. The team are super excited about the new kind of jobs we're gonna be undertaking and, and where we're pushing our business towards in the future. Uh, so that's been a huge positive impact on the business so far. So something we spoke about, and this is gonna be so valuable to you is increasing our prices. Of course, everyone wants to get paid more money, but how do we get into that next bracket, those big budget clients? And what I've been working on is basically just some analysis of markets and our positioning. And this really comes with getting that vision with the team of where we wanna go, because then that starts to tell us what we want to do moving forward. And for us, we wanna to move towards those really engaging and emotional pieces of content. Those adverts you see that shine a light on certain topics or political matters or things that just need to be addressed. We wanna work with brands that aren't scared of putting a spotlight on things that should be talked about, whether that's diversity in all sensitive of the term, whether that's feeling included, whether that's um, simply creating an emotional connection around excitement. But that's the stuff that we want to move towards. And this isn't going to be a light switch thing where it happens overnight. This is going to take a period of time, but that helps us then position towards those brands where we can then start charging those higher ticket items such as the Nike adverts, the uh, Starbucks adverts, et cetera, et cetera. So that's something that's really exciting and that you can take from that is to go away and actually figure out what is your, your vision for the company and who is your target audience? Who do you need to be talking to? Um, and that will start to really build where the future of your business is going. Something I'm still struggling with a lot and you'll find this, even though I currently run effectively four different businesses, is when you're on your own, you'll still feel this sense of not knowing how to manage your time the best. I have different businesses because it comes down to multiple streams of income. When everything was working fine with the production company, it allowed me to set up other things that I was passionate about. The Perspective Academy, YouTube, doing this kind of stuff, it all takes a lot of time. We have our studio rental business and we have various other bits and pieces going on. And it's been hard for me to kind of work out how best to spend my time. But if you're a freelancer or, you know, a one or two man band in a production company, my biggest bit of advice is try not to work evenings and start to standardize your working structure. Humans naturally respond really well to having a routine. So if you can develop a routine, whatever that looks like for you, then that's something that's going to be really impactful on your business. Now, I'm struggling to do that and probably need to take a bit of my own advice and sit down and actually work out, okay, maybe on this day I work on this company, this day on the other company. However, you guys know what it's like. If you get a shoot in on the Monday, then you're probably still going to do that. So I'm just trying to figure that out and I haven't, I haven't got there yet. So when I do in the next update, hopefully I'll talk to you more about that. But a little bit of advice that I give to um, our members of the academy is to start to structure a routine. It doesn't have to be boring, but allow time for fun and friends and allow time for nice lunches with you know, other business owners, but also section in time for work because that's going to keep you accountable. And finally, to wrap up, um, I find it really difficult to say no. And the issue with that is you say yes to everything. You become a bit of a yes man. You say yes to projects that you don't really want to. We've all said yes to projects where they're very low paid, but you think you're helping someone out. And it turns out that you knew deep down you shouldn't have gone for it. And lo and behold, they're a problem client or something like that. And it becomes just an absolute bane of your life. We had something recently. Uh, unfold like this. We um, had a client, sorry, a new client come to us and we initially entertained the conversation, uh, but the budget was just far too low. And that's difficult when you've lost out on so much money and you're trying to build that gap, that buffer, you're trying to bring in money. It's hard to say no to something, but for us, it just didn't make sense. And maybe you guys find that easier to do. I certainly find that really difficult, but I just had to say, I'm, look, I'm really sorry on this occasion. We've actually, since talking to you a couple of weeks ago now, we've actually changed the positioning of our business. And this is something that we're no longer going to kind of move towards. So yeah, I'm sorry. I felt like I really let that person down. I felt like they're going to judge me. I'm really, you know, I really, I've spoken about comments on YouTube before and how it's hard not to read negative comments, like constructive comments I can deal with, but 
Um, I just, if someone's misunderstood what I've said or whatever, it becomes hard and I don't have time to reply to everyone and so on and so forth. But the ultimate thing is I care about what people think about me and the business. And sometimes that can be a negative thing. And I'm trying to work on that personally as well. If you guys wanna know what happened to make my production company fail massively and fall flat on its face, then make sure you go and click this video and watch the series if you haven't already. There's so much valuable information. If people just talk about their successes all the time, you're gonna learn a little bit. If you can learn what mistakes to avoid, then you're gonna get much further in business, much quicker, and it's gonna save you so much more time and money. So make sure you check that out. If you like this, leave me a comment. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it.